Hello everyone and welcome back to The Forge. Now in our last video we finished the fit up of the guard up here on the upper guard assembly. And on this video we're going to start out with getting ready to put the horn on the handle. Now the thing is this horn right here has a natural curve in it. It's a Blesbach horn. And the tang does not have enough of a curve in it. We're going to fix a piece of all thread to the end of this with a mechanical fit up so whenever we put everything together it automatically aligns. So the first thing I've got to do today is we're going to get this into the forge. We're going to wrap this with some wet paper towels really good, keep it nice and cool uh, from about here up. And we're going to go ahead and bend this down some from about right here down so we have the proper alignment to put this horn in here and keep our spine looking nice. So let's go ahead and get the forge lit up and let's get some work done. We're going to go ahead and soak this down and as it, as it starts to dry out we're going to go ahead and just keep it wet. That will keep the heat from transferring on up into the blade of our knife. Plus like I said we're only working on a very small piece here at the end and then once we bid that we're good to go. That should do the job. Now, typically you would do this with a hand torch and you clamp it in a vise and only heat up the area and bend it. I don't have a little propane torch, so we had to improvise. This is a perfectly fine way to do this. Just make sure you keep the area really saturated with water. As you can see, I can hold right here with no problem. Got lots of water coming out. So it's nice and cool up here. Not gonna mess with our temper or anything. All right, this is the bolt we're gonna use to affix the pommel and lower guard on this sword. We're gonna take it over to the bandsaw and we're gonna cut the head of this off and then I'm gonna put it in the forge and we're gonna flatten out this end so we can mate it up with our tang and then give it a pin so it can still pivot and everything can line up once we start tightening it together. So let's get this cut off and get on to the next step. I've got this piece of mild steel here chucked up in the drill. We're going to use this for the pin that's going to hold our bolt to the tang of our sword. But it's a little bit too big. It has some paint and some coating on it. So we're going to take it over here to the belt sander right quick. And we're going to do the poor man's lathe deal. We're going to use the belt to smooth this out. Take it down a, a little bit to where it'll fit in there good. So here we go. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and get this cut off here and get it put together. All right, now we have all of the components to attach our piece of all thread to the end of our sword. But at this point, we need to move our attention back to this guard because if we do not, if we go ahead and affix this right now, this guard will never slide over the end of that. So we're gonna go ahead and get our shape of our guard laid out, get it ground to shape, and go ahead and, and, and bend it to the final positioning it will be at.
All right, now that we've rough cut our guard out on the bandsaw, we're gonna take it over to the grinder and put on a 36 grit belt and go ahead and get this thing profiled and cleaned up and ready to go ahead and shape the time right here, the swoop down on the guard, so we can get it fixed up on our copus. So let's go ahead over and get to work. All right, now that we've got our guard formed and ground to shape here, I went ahead and I bent the wire. This is the same kind of wire we used in part two to figure out the length to make the guards. So I went ahead and bent it following our diagram here, and we're gonna go ahead and just toss in the forge and get it bent to shape, and then we'll be ready to fix it up to let it set up with some JB weld. All right, now that our JB wells had plenty of tough time to set up here on the guard, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to the bottom part of the tank here and get it ready to put the rest of the components on. All right, there we go. This will allow this to move, so we gotta tighten everything up if it needs to, to move to keep it aligned, it'll work out great. Uh, also, this is pinned over more than enough to provide adequate strength. And once we put the epoxy in there, this is going to be rock solid. So, so far so good. Let's get on to the rest of it. All right, now for our Blesbach horn here, it's a little bit too long. And we want it about in the five inch range, five and a half inches. So I've taken some masking tape and wrapped it here at the end. So as we cut it, it don't splinter out. And I just went around it with a pencil on the angle that we need. This is just rough figured right now. Whenever we actually go to do the final fit up, there'll be some sanding and some grinding that has to be done. But let's go ahead and get this over to the bandsaw and get it sliced off so we can move on. So far, so good.
right, so with all that wrapped up, now it's time to put this bad boy together so I can give you an epic reveal at the end of this video. Remember, if you would, hit that like and subscribe button so you can be notified of our newest content as it comes out. Like I said, we've got lots of really cool ideas uh, down the road to do. And uh, I appreciate you for joining me for this Copus Sword build. This is by far one of my most favorite builds to date. We appreciate you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Enjoy. Enjoy.